Welcome to today's game, everybody, and today we are playing Flashpoint. Yes, this is a game where you play a bunch of firemen, fire people, fire women and men. Uh, I think actually in this particular case they all happen to be men. Well, I guess we don't necessarily know these two. They're behind masks. Anyway, people who, uh, who fight fires. Uh, which is really, I, th I thought this was a really great idea for a game. I saw this originally um, uh, as the Kickstarter. And I just thought it was a good idea because, you know, we, we have so many of these different games that are about uh, fighting each other and killing the enemy and stuff like that. It's really good to have something that's just sort of about rescue. Uh, this is on uh, Virtual or uh, Tabletop Simulator, not Virtual Tabletop Simulator, but Tabletop Simulator. Uh, and it's a really well-made one because they have a lot of automated things here. Um, first of all, uh, we already chose our uh, various um, firefighters here. And we're going to have the advanced games. So we're going to have the ambulance, the fire engine. And we have a choice of uh, these places to save. I'd like to do all of these eventually. So I'm going to start with the beach house for now. And that way I can remember next time with the others, uh, you know, which ones. We can, you know, do the other ones some other time. Um, here's where it gets really cool. This particular one where they set up, then they automated everything. You can just simply click here. Rather than having to set everything up yourself, go... Set up game. What? It's just going. Then uh, we need we st the one thing it doesn't set up is the uh, people. So uh, the the or places of interest or people of interest or whatever. And so what you do is you roll and you get the number. It even shows you what what area they're talking about here for here and. Here, the black and the red. Uh, so what you do is you drop POI. It's point of interest, and that's a little see a question mark on there. So uh, we don't know what that is. That's one of the places we want to try to rescue. So let's try again. And it could be a rumor. It could be a false alarm there. Drop POI. See, it just automates all this. This is just really awesome. So let's roll again. We need four of them out here. Uh, looks like they're in this area. The fire started in the kitchen, which I guess makes sense. And you got these people on the some somebody in the bedroom, some and a couple people over here. Let's try one more. All right, so we got two on this side of the room, two on this side, and separated by fire, which seems very appropriate. That's uh, pretty cool. All right, so uh, we're gonna get ourselves set up here. Actually, what we're gonna do is the players are all gonna do their moves. And then I'm going to report in between them. I've got some shy people here who would rather not uh, be on camera. Or have their on audio, whatever you call it. Alright, so we're set up here. And I think it's about time that we uh, explain who all the uh, characters are on here. Uh, we've got four of them here. We've got the captain, and he gives command points to everybody else. Typically you get four command points to do, or action points, as you can see on the top left. But he actually allows uh, people to do two more um, actions. Over here we got the driver operator and he uh, runs the fire truck and basically he uh, gets to um, run the fire hose a lot more efficiently, a lot quicker. We got the hazmat technician who instead of uh, having to take hazmat outdoors he can just simply dispose of it where it is. And you got the generalist who gets an extra uh, action point every turn. Now here's where it's interesting. We got two things of hazmat right here by this doorway. I didn't know that was possible, but it does say, uh, you know, I did do the automatic uh, setup, and so I'm just trusting that uh, the game knows what it's, what it's doing and how to set up. Uh, so uh, we got two right there, and then there's going to be one over here, so he's going to have to get over there. They got the ambulance right by them, uh, so apparently these two came in with the ambulance. The hazmat guy's going to be able to do that pretty quickly. Uh, it's going to be hard to get to other parts of the house because it all goes through kind of the kitchen. I guess there's the was the bathroom over here? Yeah, this is that direction through there. But anyway, the fire is going to be blocking them. But they did put the fire truck over here because the most amount of fire is in this quadrant uh, over here. So, and then you have the generals over here because they have two um, uh, two points of interest in, in this particular part. So, anyway, that's going to be the uh, setup. And uh, looks like it's probably going to have the generals try to take these guys. The hazmat, of course, take care of that leader go over to there and the fire uh, operator take that out. Let's see how it works. Alright, the fireman off to a great start here. I'm just going to call him fireman because it is all men playing. Uh, or boys, I don't know what we are. Anyway, um, 
you'll notice that these guys are back in the ambulance and there isn't much here. The reason is because the fire captain went in and found that this was a uh, false alarm. So he goes, okay, let's go home, guys. No, just kidding. But he did actually leave, you know, went out to the ambulance, hazmat guy, and he gave his two extra action points to the hazmat guy. Uh, actually, I'm not going in order here, but what, oh well. Anyway, I uh, gave him his two extra action points to the hazmat guy. He went in there, uh, and because he had six actions, he goes in, got rid of both things of hazmat because it's just two uh, points for each one, got rid of both of them, and then just went back out to the ambulance because the ambulance will be able to drive them around over to uh, this side or to wherever they need to go because, you know, you got fire in the middle. It's harder to get around because of that fire. Uh, oh, the, um, the, what is he called? The driver operator. Uh, he shot up into here to get rid of this fire. He actually hit the, whoever this point of interest is, so he apparently hit the person who's in there, but it splashed off because it, it, it gets rid of all the adjacent areas, so he got rid of all the fire that was around them, the smoke appeared after him. So, yeah, by hitting uh, the victim, he managed to put out the fire around him, and uh, the generalist came up here and found this hot young lady here. So, he's going to be dragging her ass out of there, and uh, we'll continue on. This turn finds uh, the firemen all in this area. The uh, fire captain moved into here. Kind of forgot exactly what he did in there, uh, but I do know that uh, these two, the hazmat technician, he got the extra uh, action points from the f captain. He came in here, found a kitty, and he's dragging that kitty out of there. And uh, this guy is taking the hot chick out of there. Meanwhile, the driver came around here. I uh, didn't spray a person this time, just simply sprayed this area. Uh, and there's more smoke building on this person over here. So she's <coughs> coughing, and there's all this uh, explosive material next to her. So she's coughing under the smoke, uh, and uh, it's getting hot around all that hazmat stuff. It's going to cause an explosion. She's in trouble. All right, it's been a little bit uh, tougher of a turn for the uh, firemen. Um, the fire captain moved over to here and opened the door because this is going to be a dangerous situation. You got both a person and a hazmat there. We're actually not supposed to know this person. This is a point of interest, uh, but it got flipped over somehow earlier. Um, anyway, uh, so he came over to here, opened that door, uh, gave his extra points to the generalist. The t hazmat technique, actually, first of all, the driver and operator, uh, well, actually, before it got to his turn, actually, it was still the uh, fire captain's turn, he opened the door and suddenly smoke appeared over the hazmat. So he had smoke over the person and smoke over the hazmat. So this is a real dangerous situation. She could catch on fire, the uh, hazmat could catch on fire and cause an explosion. So it was really a dangerous situation. Luckily, it just happened to turn into the driver operator's turn right then. He put it all out, uh, but then smoke reappeared just over the hazmat area. So it is back into danger. The hazmat technician came out to here, rescued a person, uh, and then the generalist came out, put a person in there. Actually, I guess it was like the hazmat technician uh, was carrying the, the cat, so the cat was rescued first, which my girlfriend would be very happy about. Uh, and then the generalist came out there with the cat, took the ambulance all the way to this side, and that was all of his action points. So he got out there with a hot chick and is driving off with her in the um, uh, ambulance along with a cat. I don't even want to know what they're going to do. Alright, so it's been kind of interesting over here in this particular part of the world. The um, uh, fire captain put smoke out, went through, uh, found the person that was here, uh, be, you know, and basically went to rescue her. Then smoke appears over them both. Uh, 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 the um, driver operator comes over here to put out fire here. And smoke appears here again, and the hazmat operator, who's been given a couple extra action points from the fire captain, comes in, puts the smoke out, then gets rid of the hazmat, has just enough points to get rid of the hazmat, which is perfect. The generalist also has just enough points, he comes running into here, grabs this person, and then starts moving out. So this, this uh, stubborn fire, this, this smoke just keeps wanting to appear here by this hazmat and by this, uh, this person. And it's, apparently this is where maybe the person's smoking and that's the... Oh, that's what it is. She just keeps on smoking and that it just keeps appearing around her. She shouldn't smoke around uh, explosive materials. All right, the firemen are doing pretty well. It's uh, They've been getting really lucky because you had... Uh, the captain came out of here with the gal and found a puppy right outside the door. So the hazmat specialist came along, the uh, fire captain ordered him, Get out! Come out here! Get that puppy! 
And so he came out, picked up a puppy, and now he's moving and he's actually gotten to the door. Uh, this, uh, the uh, driver operator continues to blow water on the place and is just continuing to keep the uh, flames out. Actually, we're realizing that the um, fire captain and the driver operator is a, a, an unholy alliance there because normally it should take you all your entire turn to use the fire hose and you just get this one chance to like put uh, you know fires out but the driver operator has him only two action points to do that so he, he can do it twice in his turn already then you have the uh, fire captain give him two more uh, action points and he can be putting that fire out three times in one turn so he can just basically put out the fire on the place plus he gets re-rolls so he's basically rolling six times for three results uh, it's just, it's insane. He's, he's putting out the fire everywhere and uh, along with the fire captain. It's, it really is a sort of perfect combination. We're just going to have to use that uh, from now on. Let's, let's take a look down here at the uh, point of view of this uh, area, shall we? Because over here we have gotten out the, uh, the generalist has gotten out with uh, this guy. He is now out of there and in the ambulance. And you have three people who are so far rescued. So we are about halfway there. We need seven to be rescued to get out. Oh, by the way, let's take a look also. This is the uh, the place where we are playing. Figured it was uh, appropriate to have sort of a regular room. Uh, the only thing more appropriate would be like, you know, the place is on fire. Uh, so anyway, figured that would be appropriate for this. A bit of a sad turn. The flames uh, spread over here, killing one of these people, uh, apparently one over here. Oh, the teenage girl. Oh, somebody who was probably uh, moping in her room going, dang. Oh, it wasn't a room. It was uh, the game room. Oh, it was a fellow gamer. Oh, that's really sad. I was about to make fun of her and call her like goth or something like that, but it was, she was in the game room. What a terrible way to go, especially because all the games probably went on fire. It's probably, you know, probably this one just sort of went up in flames all of a sudden. But anyway, very sad. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, the specials actually what was happening over here the captain and the hazmat technician both had people to bring out the problem was in this advanced game the ambulance has to be you can't just take them outside you have to actually have the ambulance there and the person with the ambulance was the uh, generalist who was way over here and so he had to use his turn to come over here he does have five action points and the captain gave him two more so he had seven so he brought he spent two to come over here oh wait a second that's i just realized that's four because he wouldn't come all the way across two to come over here but four to go to the other side so it's four then five six seven he should be over here at this particular point not quite that far four five six seven yes that's right also we didn't do his fire so this is what this is what's really cool about this particular one you, you normally you would have to especially on or normally you would have to roll and figure out where everything goes uh, and this being virtual tabletop it doesn't necessarily automate things for you but somebody programmed into this one okay you just roll you don't even roll it to yourself you just simply push the roll and then you go advance fire and there you go it's it just sort of automatically puts it where it's supposed to be plus if you needed to uh, you know to put out another point of interest you would roll and you'd push drop POI and it just automatically does it so you don't have to figure out okay where does this go it just boom right there by the way something else I, I forgot to mention the hazmat technician he was already here he was waiting for the ambulance so he and yeah, there was you know supposed to be somebody here so he went ahead and just checked it out before uh, you know uh, before he left so he spent his turn just kind of coming over here finding out that it was a false alarm then coming back here and waiting for the ambulance so that's their turn uh, for now Two people rescued, but uh, it was a little bit discouraging at the end there. Uh, the um, the captain and the hazmat specialist both got somebody on the ambulance, and the hazmat specialist took the uh, ambulance around right by the fire engine, which is putting out a lot of the flames here, making it really clear. That kitchen is actually completely clear. It's the first time in this game, I think. That was where it all began, and we actually might just put this fire out. Uh, anyway... Um, the uh, captain gave his two extra action points to the generalist here, who ran inside. Actually, the captain really works with good with the generalist, too, because that gives seven action points, almost double what a standard person has. Anyway, ran in here to rescue somebody, and it turned out it was a false alarm over here, so now he's moving over here. Uh, we have five rescued, only need two more to win this. Oh, and we need to put two more points of interest down on the table. Just going to show the incredible luck of where the uh, points of interest dropped. Uh, this is totally random. You roll, and just, like... One appeared right behind this guy, and one appeared right in front of him. So, uh, I think they're going to be able to get two out of all that. 
And in this turn, the uh, f uh, fire captain found, uh, basically they went to look for these three people that just appeared right around them, the pe or at least the points of interest. The captain found this redhead, started pulling her towards the door, was like, oh, I'm going to get you out this door, and then smoke came up, then fire came up. We rolled this space twice during this one turn, so it was clear, and all of a sudden it flared up, so it smoked into uh, flames. This guy came here, cleared away the smoke. The idea was, okay, you all clear away the smoke so there's no fire. And then, of course, fire appeared right at the one place where they needed it not to. The hazmat specialist came up here, found this gal, is getting her out that door. And once again, the um, generalist runs over here, and there's just a rumor. He just keeps finding rumors everywhere he goes. So he came over here and said it and just started chopping away at the wall. I uh, typically have to worry about that sort of thing because as you know, the structure goes, the whole thing comes down on you. But right now, we're, we're so clear. Actually, we've been really clearing this. A lot, a lot of it is due to that fire engine. That fire engine basically uh, just clears away areas. And then when you have that specialist and, or the, uh, the operator and the fire captain on top of that, that just clears entire areas away. I'm going to just make sure that I'm reading this right. Return, you may spend uh, AP move other players. AP spin this way, or the normal movement cost of the app may move. So it's, oh wait, here, hold on. Free command AP cannot be saved. Yeah, okay, so he is, uh, he, we're doing it right. It's just, uh, you know, it's kind of an unholy life. Actually, the fire captain in general is, like, really powerful. You give extra things to, to people, and then you have their specialty on top of that. Um, you know, you can just clear away entire areas. I mean, he's not doing anything else, but he's doing enough by just, you know, clearing away the fire in these places. We're getting close to the end here, and the uh, captain just cannot catch a break. So he's dragging his guy towards the door. He manages to get the door open, and all of a sudden, smoke appears right by him. He was—he actually switched directions. He decided, okay, the fire's here. I'm going to get away from there. So he starts going the other way, and smoke... Actually, first smoke appears over here, like, getting ready to block the door, and then it appears on him. So it's just like it seems that the fire is determined to keep the... Uh, uh, to keep the captain from getting out. Meanwhile, the has-been specialist is almost out, and uh, the uh, generalist is almost out. However, he's going to need the ambulance over there in order to do that. Uh, they just need to get two more back, two more out of there, so they don't really need the third. The the um, captain could just leave the person behind, but what kind of captain would be he be leaving somebody behind? And we did it. Uh, we got our seven people into the ambulance. Uh, there's the stack right there under the hazmat guy. He's standing on all of them. Uh, we also rescued this person uh, with the uh, generalists, just as you know, for good measure. Now there isn't the ambulance there, but we already have the seven there, so no need. Basically, what happened is uh, the um, fire cap, or yeah, the fire captain. Um, gave his extra points to the hazmat guy, he moved into the space, the hazmat guy got his person out, then came in, took the person from the uh, captain, and took that person out there. Uh, ca fire captain's really powerful. Um, meanwhile, they were uh, supported with covering fire from the, uh, uh, from the fire truck operator, uh, who was able to just sort of, you know, put out fire, it put out a lot of flames around there. I mean, basically, he just hits one space and everything around it is taken out. Uh, he really just basically blast an entire area. It's very, very effective. Um, and he's particularly effective. I mean, anybody can actually operate the, uh, the fire engine, but he's especially uh, uh, powerful because of the fact that uh, it only costs him two action points, so he can do it twice. Normally, it's supposed to take your entire turn. It's super powerful, but it's supposed to take your entire turn to be able to do it. Uh, and even if you move, then you can't do it because you're supposed to just be sitting still, and it takes your whole turn. Um, this guy, he can even move to another space and still use the uh, fire hose from the engine. Um, if he, uh, but if he stays still, he gets to do it twice, and then you give him two extra action points from the fire captain, and he's just going to town, and he's hitting all these places, and he's getting re-rolls when he misses. So it's just like, that's an unholy alliance there. These two are really powerful together. Also, actually, it was, he's pretty powerful with the generalist, because the generalist already gets five uh, action points, and... Here you get uh, seven. So uh, or, I mean, if you if you give him your two extra action points, so fire captain really really powerful. He doesn't uh, have as much help for himself, but he basically gives everybody else like a lot of uh, power and control, and they get to do a lot of cool stuff. 
Um, so it's really it's really effective. I've never used it with the uh, specialist before, but I think in the future I'm going to put it on a harder mode. I usually don't play these cooperative games in hard mode because I can't even beat them in easy mode. Uh, I usually find them to be a little overly difficult. I, I like the fact that this game, uh, usually it goes both ways. It's about 50% of the time you win, 50% of the time you lose, or at least in my case. So I like that it's not impossible, but it's, you know, it's playable and winnable and all that sort of thing. This was a little too easy because of those combinations. So, uh, we'll see in the future ones. Uh, I might use different, um, different uh, people and put it on hard mode and see how it goes. But in the meantime, that'll do it for us here. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please, uh, please tell your friends about it. Uh, and uh, stay tuned to see how you may be able to support the channel. Happy gaming, everybody. Did you like this video? Then be sure to subscribe to see more and share us with your friends. Also, if you'd like to support us financially or just give us a tip, consider a donation on Patreon. A little donation from each of our viewers helps us expand the videos, keeps the channel going, and helps us make more of them. You also get bonus videos and a big thank you from us.